Hi, I'm Chris Abraham, and I'm the director of the Downtown Tyler Arts Coalition Show Us Your Shorts Film Festival, and we're here today with the winners of the festival. Um, Justin Reese. And I'm Kenny Rigsby. And their film, uh, Recommended Reading, uh, won the grand prize at our festival this year. Yes. And um, we're so glad you're with us. And um, you. really wanted to take an opportunity to kind of talk to you all day about, um, well, kind of the genesis of your project and um, how you came up with the idea and, you know, what you learned and how hard it was to learn some of those lessons. So, um, yeah. You guys are actually to thank, I think, for the genesis of it in a lot of ways. We uh, found out about the film festival and we said we've got to enter something in this, in this thing. Cool. So for about, for about two months there, we tossed ideas back and forth and most of them would become too elaborate and, and we'd have to throw it out the window and, and some of them wouldn't be comedy and some of them would be too skit light. We, we kept going through all so these different ideas. So, um, th was having to write a comedy um, yeah. hard for you? Oh, yeah. Because yes. we All the ideas we had either fell into like, oh, that would be a funny commercial or that would be a funny SNL skit. But we both have the desire to do things that have a little more lasting Im impact. And uh, driving along, I was telling my wife one day all the stuff we were thinking about and all of our different parameters we were, you know, juggling. And, uh, and she thought for about, you know, part of the drive and then just kind of laid out the basics of the story that, that we have. And so she, she got story credit. And hers was a little more optimistic. And, and hers, the guy, well, I won't tell the ending of the story, but her, right, her, right, her, right. Her, we, we took her, her, her idea and we, uh, we twisted it some to make it more filmable with our budget mm -hmm. and everything else and to, to put our own spin on it. But uh, it was definitely her original genesis. And then I think from the point we had the idea, it was about four weeks, I guess, of, of production before we had it wrapped. And um, you shot it, most of it where? Uh, most of it was at a, uh, a library. Um, I don't know if we're at liberty to say which library it was. Yeah, they were a little cagey about whether or not we could tell them where, That's okay. where we um, were. The top secret library. Top secret library. Top secret library. <laughs> here in Texas. Although um, the externals were at the public library here right, in Texas. Right, right, right. It yeah. shot over here. Yeah. yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so um, the, whole, the whole film was, was um, most of the film, 90% was to take place in a library, mm -hmm. um, did some scouting, found some uh, a few places that we liked, but we were going very guerrilla style, so mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. um, didn't know anything about permits or asking people. So right, you we showed up with some cameras one day. So and we were trying to find a place where we could do what we wanted to do. Um, um, but the library we ended up shooting with, we had uh, we had permission, um, so that one worked really well. Yeah. Um, but uh, it wasn't perfect, but we were able to make it work. When you got to that location, how much did your story have to change um, oh, because of shooting requirements once you got there? Right. Yeah. Um, one of the big requirements of the story was uh, a lot of um, a lot of shots within the aisles of li of libraries, mm -hmm. um, and so you you know the script called for floor to ceiling books, just rows of them. You know, like a typical library. Um, the one that we were able to have permission in ended up. Uh, we got there to do the, the scouting and we were pretty sure this was going to be our only option and the library cases were about this tall right. and um, like eight of them it, it looked like an <laughs> elementary school library um, for some reason and uh, yeah there's only about eight of them so we had to rework the script and um, pretty much change the bulk of, of the idea On the, the story itself stayed in place um, kind of the the arc of it, I, I would say, stayed in place, but um, kind of the the action in between yeah. when that had to and change. So, um, how long did it actually take you to shoot? How long did you were actually shooting? I think, uh, it was done in a three day period. Yeah, I think so. Um, but only I think a few hours each day. Although we did, yeah. So, uh, and then I guess the externals were a few days later. So overall, there's about a week and a half span where we were shooting, but it was total of about. I think four days that we shot and about half a day each day. And a total collaborative effort between the two of you at all times, I guess, yeah. for what you're yeah. telling us. Yeah, we've been friends for uh, about seven years yeah, right. or so. Um, so there's a the friendship aspect, you know, you kind of know how to work together, I guess, just from right, right, being right. friends. But uh, yeah, I think it works out really well. I'm uh, For the most part, we, like I would kind of direct a, a lot more of the um, the camera work and mm -hmm. uh, the cinematography, mm -hmm. and he would direct more of like director the of photography and director of the, and kind of acting. Yeah, yeah kind effectively. Of directing the actors. Y you've done so. acting in your past. Right, right. Yeah, and yeah. You've acted or? No. I don't know. No. I've done uh, photography, uh, it's my background. Right, right. That I bring to it. 
Yeah, but we, we hand the baton back and forth all throughout the deal. I mean, definitely that's the that's the, the bulk. You know, the bulk he handles most of the photography, mm -hmm. and I handle a lot of the onset, you know, acting and stuff. But yeah, we're real comfortable passing it back and forth as as needs be. Let's talk about your cast. How did you come up with your cast? <laughs> oh, extensive audition process. Right, right. worldwide. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, we really put them through the ringer. Um, Must have looked at two hundred uh, <laughs> promo tapes. I think the extent of the casting was okay. Who do we know that we think we could actually, you know, who would be available and could come? And, and we were like, well, let's call Tim. Let's <laughs> call Amanda. And let's see if Dee's available. <laughs> And, uh, Tim was available, Amanda <laughs> was available, and Dee was available. And um, you got through to all their agents right away. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah, it helped that Tim and Dee are married, so we just talked to the one agent <laughs> for them. But, um, Perfect. Yeah. And um, It was very easy. And had they acted before? This was... Um, Dee's acted. Oh, no, yeah, Dee and Amanda. Dee and Amanda. Yeah, the, the two, uh, our two leading ladies had both, uh, both acted, um, so they had some experience. Sure. Uh, the, Tim, he, he didn't. He had never, never officially acted or anything. Um, but yeah, it was, it was, we had a, I think we chopped around a couple ideas of other, we did. People. We thought about um, other people. But yeah, we were definitely looking for people that we knew well, were friends with because Did of you have them in mind as you were writing this, is to kind of, you know, to write it for them because you knew them or? I don't think so. Um, demanded them to play the Tim. parts. <laughs> Tim's part? Wasn't, well, when the story was conceived, of, uh, it wasn't. Yeah, the, the initial skeleton of the story, we mm -hmm. didn't have anybody in mind. But then, yeah, as we, as we started customizing it, yeah, I guess pretty early on, we knew, we thought we knew who we were going to cast. And so we started, oh, Tim would be great at, you know, this mm -hmm, sort of thing. Mm -hmm. and yeah, we did customize it for them a lot. Yeah. And Tim wrote the music for you as well, right? Yeah. He did. Right. Um, is, and is. so how important was it, I guess, of him knowing your story and to be able to, to write, did he write the music before or after you? Edited, or when did that take place? Yeah, he wrote the music. Uh, we tried very hard to get a final cut before he started writing the music. Mm -hmm. um, he gave us kind of some samples to work with, just so we could have the kind of the vibe and the feel, because um, we worked with him just to, to find that vibe of the music to match. And uh, we would tinker around with some things and, and use it while we were editing, just to get the overall kind of the vibe and the feel of it. Um, but we tried to get a final cut so that he could kind of actually make the music for the, the, the film. Yeah, we wanted him to, the highs and lows and everything, mm -hmm. for uh, the music um, to come alongside yeah. of what we'd already yeah. cut. This was both of your third attempt at a film. Had you Something ever, like that. Yeah. Had you ever done uh, anything that you'd had music written before, or this was your first attempt at putting music to a... Yeah, first attempt. Yeah, the other stuff we did was <laughs> kind of just, yeah, you just throw iMovie stuff on there or mm -hmm. some other soundtrack mm -hmm. sure, song, sure. and we, we throw it on there. And y you might tweak the, uh, the editing to fit the music, but no, the first well, original it, composition we um, had. Your storytelling involves so much of the music, it uh, really required a fine eye to yeah. make it all match well. Yeah, and production schedule being production schedule, you know, we're, we're tweaking the editing and the timing all up until the very last minute, which means we're constantly sending it back to him and going, sorry, we chopped 12 seconds off of it, can you take out three measures? And so, you know, it was going back and forth. The, that last week, it was like almost every day, there would be another cut across back and forth. How much of your project changed from the time you got it all wrapped shooting and got to the editing bay and then said, okay, here's our story? <laughs> yeah. mm, no, not all changed? <laughs> Huge changes, I would say. Yeah. We ripped out a whole chunk of the story, a whole sort of layer to it in the editing room. It was already shot, foleyed everything, uh, because we just realized it wasn't working. It just didn't work for you. It just didn't work in, in the story. And then, uh, so yeah, one whole chunk came out, but then, you know, gags, you find out that you didn't shoot them right and they're not funny. Mm -hmm. Or um, stuff that you didn't think would be a gag, you realize you, you just tweak it a little bit and all of a sudden it's really funny. Um, so I'd say that while the, while the storyline didn't change any, mm -hmm. whole aspect of the story that seemed really critical when we were scripting it and when we were shooting it, we got into the editing room and realized, you know what, not only do we not do that very well, but it's kind of like the Hemingway ask, you know, don't tell everything, you know, just mm -hmm. tell enough for them to bridge the gap themselves. And so we realized, yeah, we can actually yank this out and it still works and it might even work better. Right, right, right. And, and you let your audience take a kind of a leap with you at that right. point rather than painting it real right. broad for them. Feeling like you have to actually spell out and do, mm -hmm. you, know, exactly. you just kind of let it happen. Talk about some of the challenges you experienced making your film. Um, yeah, one of the things, though, you know, looking at locations, looking at places we wanted to shoot, uh, there, we didn't know where to go for, say, permits or things like that. It's like, do we, 
Should we ask is people, it, or should we just... Is it legal yeah. <laughs> if we shoot here <laughs> Should we just asking? start filming? Are we arrested <laughs> if we do this? <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Um, so that was one of the challenges, just not knowing who who should we talk to if this is what we want to do. Um, do we want to tell people we're doing this, or do we want to just kind of go and sneak in and do it and get out? Right. 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 How fast until they notice that we're here mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. run us off. Right. So the big challenge with that, with the story we were shooting was a library, <laughs> which is, you know... Right, you can't. Yeah. It's not a park. You can't yeah. right. show up yeah. and right. no one notices you. <laughs> yeah. But there's that, and then the other thing with um, with there not being a, a you know a, a real film scene here in Tyler yet. Uh, you go into places and you say, "Hey, I'm shooting a short film, or we're shooting a film. We, you know, want to do this and that." And you know, they're just kind of like, "Okay," you know. There's kind of maybe a little bit of s a little mm -hmm. skeptical or just not sure. And uh, so that, I think that was kind of a felt a bit of a challenge. Yeah, because I think that a lot of locations or a lot of business owners need the education also about what's the law, okay, what, what does my insurance cover? You know, you go to some place like LA, everybody I'm sure knows, everybody's had a filmmaker approach them and say, can we shoot here? And so not only do the filmmakers know what they're supposed to do beforehand, but right, then the, the, the businesses, knows, the right, landowners, right. whoever, um, they know what their responsibility or role is. And so here, there was just, we're so ignorant, we're so naive about it all. and. Not only did we not know, and the people we talked to not know, but we didn't know where to go to find out. Mm -hmm. And so one of our hopes and desires for Tyler uh, to help filmmakers is that th whether it's a centralized city, you know, council or board or, mm -hmm. or group, that uh, some resource we can go to to say, okay, well, we, 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 you know, I mean, something like a location finder is awesome. You mm -hmm. know, we're, we're kind of looking for an old warehouse. Is there someplace we can shoot? But even smaller than that, just saying, okay, we're, we're wanting to shoot on some private property, you know, what do we need to do insurance-wise? What do we need to do right, permit-wise? Right. How do you want to protect yourself gun? as a filmmaker to so you right. and get your, your Yeah, because shot. you can find resources on the internet and stuff, but those things might not be, uh, might not be local information. They might not apply locally. Uh, they might be out of date. So having a local resource for that kind of stuff for us would be tremendously well, useful. I can, I can happily tell you on behalf of the Downtown Tyler Arts Coalition, we're working on it right now for you. So Wonderful. Uh, <laughs> someday we'll make that announcement soon. But um, hopefully we'll, we'll be able to put some resources together like that. Um, all our films in the festival uh, came from, majority of them came from Tyler at least. Um, is there a film community in Tyler? Or are we, or, you know, are we budgeting? Are we the next Austin? I hope. <laughs> Yeah, we don't we don't run with a lot of filmmakers in Tyler. So I'm not really sure right. what the scene is like. Obviously, at the film festival, we saw there were a lot of people from mm -hmm. here that, that were doing stuff. We haven't followed up with any of them, so I'm not sure. I think the interest is probably there. Uh, I think that because Tyler doesn't have an ex much of an existing open film scene, anybody who is interested assumes there's not and either just doesn't do anything or goes elsewhere. Um, so obviously, the more high profile the film scene, you know, what 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 nation or you know small film scene is here, uh, the more it's publicized and put out there, the more people who are interested will say, oh, right, okay, right, right. we don't have to leave you know, for that. Because mm -hmm. um, you know, one of the things about being an independent filmmaker is that you don't have much of a budget to go anywhere. You know, location shooting elsewhere is going to be expensive for all kinds of reasons, and so um, just for you know, budget and practicality reasons, we have to stay local, even if we you know, didn't like it, which we right, happen right. to like it here. There's cool, there's cool places to shoot, but mm -hmm. even if we didn't, we'd probably shoot here anyway. Um, just for practical reasons. If someone's watching this right now and wants to make a film, yeah. what would you tell them the most important thing for them to do right now is? Very good question. I, I, all right, I would say complete a finished product no matter what it is, no matter how good or bad you think it is. Do the best you can, but actually complete something. Finish it. Yeah, and you know what is really cool for us? For us, having the timeline, the, the, the deadline that we had, having a limit. We put you up against the wall. Yeah, you said so. we have to produce something by then. So give yourself some parameters. Say, I'm going to shoot something that's going to be at least 30 seconds long, but maybe no more than that, and it's going to be done by next week or whatever. And then even if it's shot on your iPhone, edited in iMovie, and has just a sound, it's just a music video or whatever else. If you make something, you're going to know what you're capable of, and you're going to discover those limitations. If you read a book or watch a documentary on filmmaking, mm -hmm. you're going to discover their limitations and their challenges, but you won't discover your challenges and your limitations and what you have to work on. Perfect. My advice would be find a good story. So you can find a good story. And is story important? It is. Mm -hmm. it's it's the most important thing. Yeah, if there's if there's no story, it's just a series of clips and shots and sound and it's a mess. <laughs> but yeah. yeah.
you have a good story and then tell it as, as well as you can. Maybe that's not very well, but tell it anyway. And learn how to tell it better for next time. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Perfect. Well, thank you guys for being with us. We've talked about your film for so long. So um, with no further ado, ladies and gentlemen, recommended reading. You can do this. Is it weird? No, it's not weird. It's cute. It's romantic. She'll like it. I mean, she likes books. She's a librarian. I wonder what her middle name is. It's like Veronica. Or Susan. It's not creepy. Is this creepy? We're gonna get married and have little blonde babies. Julian. I name one of them Julian. Name one Simon. Why am I talking about babies? I didn't even talk to her yet. Karen? Good name with that. How did I get myself into this? Oh. Okay. I can do this.
Like all programs with the Downtown Tyler Arts Coalition, the film festival is enjoying tremendous interest within the community and showing steady growth. If you'd like more information about independent film in Downtown Tyler or any of the other programs offered by DTAC, let us know. We'd love to hear from you. Tyler has been a major source of talent for a long time, and we want to help provide the connections needed to help new talent prosper and grow. For the City of Tyler, I'm Serena Butcher.